You can think of variables in Lua like the show and user variables that you can use in MA2 macros. Um, so variables in Lua let you store values, which you can then reuse in other parts of your plugin. And what's maybe important to know is that at this point, the variables in Lua have nothing to do with show or user variables in the MA2 console. All right, so you can sort of use that mental image to imagine what variables do in Lua, but Lua variables by themselves, they're separate from all of that other stuff. All right, we'll see later how those can be modified with gma.show set var and get var, um, but we'll cover that later. So again, show variables, separate thing. Back to the Lua variables. There are two kind of variables in Lua, local and global. And the local variables, they're only available inside of your plugin, which is great, while global variables are available across plugins. So one of the most important things I want you to remember when using variables in Lua is this. Only use local variables. I cannot even stress this enough. Um, let's put it more bluntly. Do not ever use global variables in Lua because you will create a special version of hell for yourself. We'll take a look at a few examples and then I hope you can understand why. And then in the meantime, you can also actually get to know how to use variables in Lua. All right, let's jump into it. So opening the code sample file local and global verse dot Lua, you find four different examples here. And um, I need you on this one to actually copy and paste those into four different plugin. So I'm just going to do that right now. And then in a second, we'll see the dangers of using global variables. Um, right. So this is example number one, I'm just going to go over here and lock, lock. local global one. Local global two, local global three, and then local global four. All right, there we go. Now let's select this first one, control C. This is number, nope, this is four. All right, now I actually hit Control A and Control X. Again, Control A, Control V to insert it. Jumping back in here, Control C, Alt tap over to the plugin window, Control A, Control V, Alt tap back to the code window, Control C, right click. Control A, Control V to insert it. All right, and we'll take a look at the code in just a second. Uh, and the last example. Whoopsie. Nope. Control C. All right. Now, um, let's take a look here. Uh, what do we do first? If you now execute this first plugin, you will see that we are setting a variable here. And this will be picked up by the second plugin in just a second. But first, I need to explain in general, when you write any sort of text in Lua like that, and you use this um, equal operator to actually assign a value to it, then you just created a variable. And unless you write the keyword local in front of it, it's a global variable. And what's interesting, I'm going to run these two plugins in just a second, and we will see that this first value that's set in the first plugin is actually going to appear over here. And what I'm actually going to do first is just run the second plugin, and it says something like nil. This is always the case when Lua sort of, you know, if, if there's not a value set for something. So in this case, it doesn't even find this you know, variable at this point. 
Now though, and pay attention, we're now executing, executing this first plugin and now we're running the second plugin again and all of a sudden there is a value. So you saw that between the two plugins, there was this value set that was now used in the second plugin. All right. And what's special here, I mean, not special, but the, the danger is that you can change around the value in the first uh, example plugin. You will see that the second example plugin will output the updated value. Now here comes the problem. When we now hit the third example, it will overwrite that variable. All right, let's take a look at the code. Um, in this case, you know, we're overriding selected executor with something that's obviously bogus. You know, that stuff just doesn't belong in there, but that's the whole point. Now, if we hit this third plugin and we run our second again to come back to that selected executor, oh, all of a sudden, it was accidentally overwritten as the text suggests. The problem is that in this case, it's clearly not a valid executor anymore. And that's exactly the point. You will accidentally overwrite your global variables and that will create a huge mess. And, you know, you might be able to handle that quite well for just a couple of plugins, but then over time, your amounts of plugins grow and all of a sudden you have separate plugins that instead are tightly tangled together because they all, you know, sort of rely on these values that some other part of your code set. So that gets you into a really deep mess really fast. All right. Instead, what you want to do is use local variables. And that brings us to the fourth example. So let's take a look at the code. And in this case, what we're doing is um, we're actually defining a local variable by adding the local keyword in front of it. And now when we execute that plugin, we can see that the value being printed onto the command line feedback um, that we defined earlier um, is actually being used here. No surprises. So let's just run this just as we expected from the code, right? Um, this main function is being run. And then, you know, this local variable selected executor is being used in this down here. So it's being output perfect. What might surprise you though, is that the global variable in this case is completely untouched by this. Um, so now when we execute the second plugin again, we will actually, um, you know, see that it's still this, um, whoops, I guess it was accidentally written value. So this thing over here, all of a sudden we can see that it's disconnected from um, this global variable. Just like macro variables sort of act in these two different universes where you have these user and these show variables um, that can kind of exist independently. That's exactly, you know, what, what local and global variables are like in a way. They are sort of in two separate universes and the local variables, they don't mess with the global variables and vice versa. So now that you know the difference between local and global variables, take a look at the next two videos where I'm going to use variables to show you how you can deal with numbers and text in Lua.